Hey everybody, it's Chris. Welcome to another interview. Today it's my pleasure to interview Dr. Wamid Talib. And Dr. Talib is a professor of cancer biology at Applied Science Private University in Amman, Jordan. He's authored a number of studies on natural anti-cancer compounds from medicinal plants and herbs such as lemon, garlic, ginger, curcumin, black cumin, piperin, which is black pepper, resveratrol, melatonin, and many others. And uh, he authored a paper uh, that was published in 2017 that some of you may be aware of because I wrote an article about it. And that paper was on uh, lemon garlic extract and breast cancer. And an absolutely fascinating study, which we'll get into, uh, about how powerful those two compounds are when they're combined. They're powerful on their own, but when they're combined, they're even more synergistically powerful. Um, but, bef and, and we're going to talk about melatonin, we're going to talk about black seed oil and thymocinone. Uh, we're going to talk about all kinds of really cool stuff, so I'm really excited to dig in. And uh, welcome, Dr. Talib. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I'm very glad and excited to record with you and to have this opportunity to share some information that uh, may help uh, cancer patients. Uh, also, I would like to thank uh, uh, Maureen White, uh, my friend from Montreal. She is one of your followers who helped me to know a lot about your website and the activities that you are doing to help uh, cancer patients to improve their lifestyle and uh, diet. Uh, actually, uh, before speaking about scientific details, I want to tell you that you are doing a beautiful job by giving advice for the cancer patients to improve their diet and uh, lifestyle. Uh, Chris, you know, every day thousands of articles are uh, released uh, dealing with the cancer, diet, uh, natural products. However, the majority of cancer patients cannot translate the results in these articles into practical, simple, straightforward steps that can help them to change their uh, lifestyle. So what you are doing, actually, you are making a bridge between what we are producing of uh, uh, publications of scientific work, which is somehow complicated for uh, people. You are bridging or converting this complicated information into simple, straightforward, in very beautiful way. So I want to thank you, and I really appreciate what you are doing uh, by helping uh, cancer uh, patients. Well, Dr. Talib, that, that means so much to me. Thank you. And yes, it's true. I, I am trying my best to, to take complicated science and make it easy to understand and practical because so much of it, especially the science about nutrition and the science about natural compounds, is useful. If, if only we know, if only we are told about it, about foods to eat, right, or foods not to eat, we can do these things. I mean, it, the drug world is a whole different ball game. You have to have a doctor, you have to have research, you, you know, and the, the patient has no power uh, in terms of getting access to drugs and drug research and all those things, but, but we have a lot of power in our diet and lifestyle choices, and so as a patient advocate and a survivor, I, I just get excited anytime I come ac stumble across research like yours. I, I just can't wait to share it. So again, I want to tell you, you're, you're doing so, such important work and I, it's a thrill to, to interview you and I'm excited to dig in. So first question is, how did you discover nutrition and natural compounds? What made you decide to pursue this line of research uh, as opposed to ph pharmaceutical research? That's true. Actually, it started before 17 years ago when I was uh, studying for master degree. I was working in uh, on tissue leukemia, to, and I used to collect uh, blood samples from cancer patients and return back to the uh, lab for processing. The first shock was for me was uh, the fact that many of cancer patients that I that I took samples from them were uh, children. So uh, I saw how much they uh, suffer. Also, I uh, noticed the frustration in the face of uh, uh, their parents. So it was a painful experience for me to deal with the, directly with cancer patients to collect blood samples uh, uh, from them. 
what was extremely painful for me at uh, this stage when I returned back to collect more blood samples I shocked when I didn't find some patients simply they passed away so at this point I decided to spend my, my whole life diving in cancer research and trying to provide alternative cancer therapies less toxic and more uh, effective so I uh, finished my master degree directly I starting my PhD on natural products and cancer uh, research to provide something useful for this uh, cancer uh, patient less toxic uh, less uh, side effects I did the master uh, the PhD in uh, natural products and uh, cancer and how to discover new therapies then I start working in my university now, Applied Science Private University, uh, and they were very generous and supported me to establish my cancer research lab. And uh, we started testing different uh, natural products, uh, diets, uh, different uh, interventions. Uh, and now we are working uh, to design an anti-cancer food. Uh, so we reach very good stages uh, by uh, making combinations that uh, work synergistically to provide or to present something for uh, cancer uh, patients. Well, that, um, that makes a lot of sense. And it, it, again, gets me excited that there are, are people working on this, <laughs> you know, like doing things that I cannot do uh, to try to advance, you know, nutrition and especially anti-cancer nutrition. So, exactly. So, Let's talk about um, this, the lemon garlic study, because I, would you like to give a little background about why, why you chose garlic and lemon, you know, what their role is in, uh, in relationship to cancer cells, how they interact with cancer cells? Okay, uh, actually, uh, I start focusing uh, on diet because, uh, as you know, this part, uh, of cancer patients is neglected by uh, doctors, by oncologists. Uh, the main focus of oncologists is to use uh, chemotherapeutic drugs. So they trust in a few milligrams of any medication and they don't use maybe kilograms of food that we are take uh, daily. Also, we drink maybe one to two liters of uh, different drinks daily. And also we are not using these drinks as a method to improve uh, or to protect or to treat uh, cancer. From this point, uh, I start focusing uh, on diet, especially here in the Middle East. Uh, if you go to any hospital, you will see that uh, doctors, whether the patients suffering from cancer or cardiovascular disease or immune disorder, they have the same meals. I, I don't know what is the situation in the USA, but that's what I noticed here, uh, at least. So I decided to uh, start thinking about augmenting uh, the food by adding some powerful agents. Garlic uh, is very rich in organosulfur compounds, and these organosulfur compounds, they are very powerful. They have the ability to inhibit cancer by different mechanisms. Uh, previous studies uh, showed that the people consuming uh, garlic, they have lower incidence uh, of uh, cancer. The main problem with garlic Although we are using a lot of garlic in the Middle East, in China, in India, but the way of using garlic is to uh, add the garlic uh, in, uh, and cooking it, exposing the garlic uh, uh, to high temperature. Exposing garlic to high temperature reduces uh, the power of anti-cancer compounds in uh, garlic. That's why uh, uh, I start thinking how to use garlic fresh without uh, exposing it to high temperature. The main challenge was uh, the flavor. It is not e and the smell. It is not easy to ingest uh, raw garlic for anyone. <laughs> so uh, I start thinking uh, how to to reduce that to make uh, to make it something uh, drinkable. Uh, lemon juice also contains many flavonoids, which uh, are very active compounds and contain limonene, which is very active against cancer. At the same time, when you mix both of them, the low pH, the acidic environment in lemon, uh, enhance the release of more active compound in garlic. At the same time, it reduces the smell and the flavor of garlic. I did that. I tested it on myself. I tested it on my uh, father. 
he liked the uh, the juice and the, now he is maybe in his uh, seventh year drinking uh, lemon and garlic juice daily me too i drink seven years uh, wow yes 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 uh, and because, how, let me ask you how much do you consume what is what is your personal dose your daily dose well, uh, chris i expected uh, this question from you so i prepared uh, beside me a cup to show you what i drink daily oh fantastic the there it is okay this is damat i prepare it uh, fresh is that uh, about for, maybe for four ounces is that um maybe uh, in milliliter around 70 to 80 milliliter got it uh, i can uh, drink it uh, two times per day but always after meals after meals um so it is very powerful i noticed that uh, for me uh, uh, even uh, this combination uh, reduce the frequency of uh, viral infection for me. Uh, also, it has uh, uh, very powerful activity against uh, cardiovascular disease. It reduced the lipid profile uh, in the blood, to, so it slowed down the atherosclerosis. Uh, for cancer, I tested in the lab. Uh, I gave it to mice, the study that uh, you know about it, and uh, the results were amazing. Uh, I did not expect uh, to get uh, this percentage uh, of cure uh, in mice, so it was very uh, effective, uh, safe, and anyone can uh, uh, take it uh, daily, let's say between uh, 50 to 80 milliliter once or two uh, times per day, and you can dilute it if the flavor is very strong, the, the instructions in the article just for the research but you can dilute it and take a larger volume to get the same benefit. So I, I want to talk about uh, what you found in the study and, um, and we'll, we'll link to an article because I, I entered the study, but I wrote an article to try to summarize the, the findings of the study. And um, so what you did was you, you had uh, mice and you uh, injected breast cancer tumor cells into the mice yeah. and after two weeks they grew tumors and then for another two weeks you injected either lemon extract garlic extract or the or both exactly. into their exactly. stomachs right yeah intragastric okay and then uh and then and then over that two week period uh of treatment which you were i guess giving them one one injection per day um mm -hmm. the tumors shrunk by an average of 80 percent and true. 60% of the mice were cancer free at the end of two weeks. That's true. But the group that got no lemon or garlic, they had an increase of tumor size of 566%. I mean, that's, that's a big increase in two weeks. That's true. Um, but then the, I guess the, the really exciting tidbit of the study is the, the mice that were given both of lemon and garlic together had an average tumor shrinkage of 91%, and 80% of those mice had no tumors at the end of two weeks, which is exactly. incredible. Exactly, exactly. And, and this we is... tested uh, on, on breast cancer specifically. The, the model was breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Breast cancer, yes, I, sorry, I didn't mention that. It's a breast cancer model in mice. Uh, and I mean, it's such a simple thing to do, You right? You, you, and I put instructions in the in the uh, in the article I wrote, but you're just making an extract of lemon juice and garlic juice, True. and you drink it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Simply, Chris, the idea uh, is very simple. What we are doing, you, we just keeping uh, taking this uh, juice daily. What we are doing, we keeping high concentration of the active ingredients. Why the majority of people cannot get benefit from food? because they don't take active ingredients that fight cancer in their food. Uh, the food is filled with fat, with high, uh, with sugar, with a lot of calories, but without any single agent fighting cancer. So if we take it daily, that means we are increasing the concentration of these phytochemicals uh, in our bodies to reach the point that it can fight and prevent cancer. It is also preventive, not only for treatment, we can use it to protect ourselves from cancers, from viral infection, also uh, for cardiovascular disease. It is very effective because, as I told you, my father 
taking the same drink and uh, he has stent in his heart due to cardiovascular complications and i think uh, this uh, juice is helping him uh, a lot in his case the amount that you're drinking once per day is that right once per day for you yes it is Th once that's, per day. that's a much larger dose uh, relatively speaking than what the mice were given isn't it that's true but uh, what i'm doing i prepare a diluted one uh, chris because if you follow the instructions in the article the product will be very strong the flavor will be very strong it is for some people it is not easy, easy to ingest or to drink such a product so the idea dilute the combination to the point that is drinkable for anyone and take larger volume you will get the, the same benefit yes that's great uh, so is your so yours is diluted then Yes, it is diluted, yeah. How, what, what ratio of dilution? Well, uh, I did not measure actually the exact uh, weight, but if you uh, dilute uh, what is in the article uh, 10 times, okay, you will get uh, a juice drinkable with good flavor without any complication. Okay, easy, so it's 10 to 1. To yeah. So basically a 10, 10 to 1 dilution. 10. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. And Very helpful. Increase the volume uh, to up to eighty to uh, let's say fifty to eighty mil. Got it. Okay, so um, folks, you can read that article. You can make this juice. I think it's interesting that you. So you've been drinking this for seven or eight years, but you didn't do the official study for several years later. That's true. That's true. Uh, actually, I tested it. Uh, the flavor was good. I start uh, feeling uh, some benefit from drinking this juice for a long time. So I spent, uh, let's say, two years drinking this juice uh, before starting uh, the study. Uh, I noticed that uh, the frequency of uh, seasonal flu decreased. I uh, felt that, uh, uh, in general, it uh, gives me uh, some good uh, feeling. I feel like... Uh, uh, this combination is uh, helping to reduce uh, lipids. Uh, although I did not test that, but I was monitoring uh, what is happening with my father, so I, I felt uh, it is also useful in this uh, field. So I decided to test it on uh, cancer, as uh, I am working on cancer research, and uh, the results uh, were very good. Okay, so next study I'd like to talk about is uh well there the two that you did uh, uh with uh, thymocanone and w which is the active compound in black cumin seed which folks who follow me might know that as black seed oil which is a yes. a product that most people can buy on amazon and different places uh but black seed oil has this compound which we'll just call tq for short so everybody yep. TQ, uh, yeah. And TQ is also a, a remarkably powerful anti-cancer compound. Will you talk That's about that? Yes. Uh, here in the Middle East, this uh, Nigel sativa or uh, uh, black common, very common uh, for all people. Uh, they use it uh, uh, mainly in uh, many products. Also, the concentrated oil uh, used, they add it... Uh, uh, many types of uh, food so it is common and uh, maybe in uh, America it is not uh, common to the same degree like uh, in the Middle East uh, it's not, no one eats it in America <laughs> <laughs> I expected that I expected that uh, actually what I did I did not take the extract I did uh, take the TQ, the thymoquinone, the pure compound I see uh, yes. because uh, it is already uh, as you have pure compound, the activity will be uh, higher. Uh, this compound is very effective. We test it on uh, cancer. Uh, at the same time, it is very safe. So it has some ability to discriminate between cancerous cells and uh, normal uh, cells. We injected the mice with high concentration of this uh, TQ without any liver or uh, kidney uh, toxicity. So. This has encouraged us to go further. Uh, 
we start uh, establishing uh, a tumor uh, in mice the same way as in the previous study. After the tumors reach a specific site, uh, we start injecting them with the thymoquinone, uh, TQ. Also, uh, in order to augment the effect of TQ, we use resveratrol. Resveratrol uh, present in high concentration in grape uh, seeds and grape skin. And also it is very powerful and available. So we took pure resveratrol. Uh, both agents, they work uh, synergist synergistically and they inhibit uh, cancer in high degrees. Uh, we noticed that uh, uh, thymoquinone was highly effective to inhibit angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is the process of uh, blood vessel formation, while uh, thymoquinone was more active in uh, augmenting the immune uh, system. And both agents work together uh, to induce apoptosis or programmed cell death in uh, cancer uh, cells. So we, when we injected uh, bo uh, both compounds to tumor peering mice, we got the highest uh, response compared with the uh, single uh, therapy. And so this particular study, it was similar to the, the lemon garlic study in, exactly. in, in that you combined two compounds that were known to, be, to have anti-cancer effects and immune boosting, immunostimulatory effects, um, TQ, thymoquinone, and resveratrol. Most folks in the U.S. have heard of resveratrol, um, and I thought it was interesting that, uh, and I want to I want to mention a couple of highlights from this study. So these are mice that were uh, had breast cancer, and you had a control group that over two weeks the increase in tumors in the control group was eight hundred percent. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and ten percent of those mice died. That's in the group you gave resveratrol to, they had 142% increase in tumor size. So that's not nearly as bad as 800, right? 800 exactly. versus 142. Exactly. So the tumors grew some, but 60% of those mice were cured. The tumors disappeared and none of them died. That's and, true. and then the third group, well, the combination group with TQ and resveratrol, this is really remarkable. They had less than 1% increase in tumor size. So 800% for the untreated mice, 142% for the resveratrol mice, and less than 1% for the combo group. That, that's amazing. 60% uh, of that group was cured in two weeks and no death at all. Uh, so now I'm, I'm curious about this so in this particular study, you injected uh, not you didn't put this into their stomachs. You just injected the compounds into their body cavity, right? Right, right. When, why? Can you explain that? Well, uh, for this particular point, uh, we tried to uh, get the highest response because when you inject directly, the concentration of the drug will be higher. While when you ingest or uh, use intragastric injection uh, uh, for delivering uh, drugs, uh, the metabolism and the absorption of drugs to the liver will uh, somehow uh, decrease or change some of its uh, activities. Because we had no idea about the results, we tried to make the injection intraperitoneal to enhance our chance of getting uh, a positive uh, result. Uh, actually, I, I just need to explain one point. Uh, I will try to be simple as much uh, as possible so anyone can understand what I am saying. Why, uh, as you notice, we use combination therapies. Uh, for any tumor, each tumor composed of millions of cells. If you examine these cells, you will see that they are not uh, similar to each other. Some tumor, uh, within the same tumor, some cells, they are actively dividing. Some cells, they have so slow cell uh, uh, division. Uh, also, their requirements of oxygen differ. Their metabolism differ. So the idea of combination therapies or using a combination of natural products or dietary agents is to decrease the ability of cancer cells to adapt. We are preparing something to attack all varieties or in, within the same tumor. 
This is, for example, if you use a single agent therapy, uh, this single agent therapy may attack, let's say, 10% uh, of cancer cells that uh, carrying a specific mutation. Uh, for this mutation, this drug was designed. Remaining cells uh, will not be affected. This will provide more space uh, for them. They start uh, cell division and develop more aggressive cancer. While in combination therapy, uh, we are decreasing this uh, chance. We are decreasing the ability of cancer to adapt and to restart with more uh, aggressive uh, uh, tumor uh, cells. That's why it is always important to consider natural products, uh, diet with the conventional therapies. So what I'm saying, not to ignore conventional therapies, just augment the, what you are taking with something useful that will help to increase the efficiency of these uh, anti-cancer uh, therapies. That's why, uh, Chris, you noticed uh, in our studies, we always focus in combination. Uh, that's why in this study, the reduction decreased uh, up to uh, 1%, let's say, in the regression. Well, that's why the pure percentage was very high, simply because we are attacking all varieties within the same tumor. We are not focusing in uh, symbol or single type of cancers carrying specific uh, mutation. Thank you for explaining that. And I, I would like to add, just for folks that may not fully understand this, in, in, in a simple way, uh, cancer cells can adapt and they can easily adapt. And so there are definitely natural compounds and chemical compounds that can target certain aspects of a cancer cell's metabolism. Uh, but uh, that cancer cell can switch, flip some switches and, you, you know, and use other um, pathways to continue to grow and survive. And exactly. if you, you know, I don't like to use the war on cancer analogy, but I think it's useful here because if you, if you actually were going to war with another country, you would attack them by air, by sea, and by land. <laughs> right? This is beautiful. This, right? is, this is completely correct, 100% correct. Yeah, and, and you even may attack them with technology too. So you're trying to hit them from every angle. And so that's, that's the point of nutrition. You know, when you're eating really healthy fruits and vegetables and spices and herbs, they contain all these marvelous and miraculous compounds that are attacking cancer cells from every angle and uh, while not harming healthy cells. And that's, that's the beautiful, beautiful thing about nature. Um, that's true. So with this study, compared to the other one you did on TQ, the, the TQ and biopirin, uh, oh. or pi piperin, excuse me, um, wh which do you think was better? Because they both had pretty similar results in terms of the amount of uh, tumor shrinkage. And if I believe uh, both of those studies had about a 60% cure rate, did they not? That's, that's true. That's true. Actually, both uh, of them, they got uh, very good uh, uh, results. Uh, Pioprene, uh, it is well-known bio-enhancer. For example, I'm sure you know about curcumin. Everyone know about curcumin. The main problem about curcumin is its low bioavailability. We are taking curcumin, but we are uh, actually what is reaching our blood is very limited. It's hard amount. to absorb. Uh, exactly. El piperine uh, act in different way compared with resveratrol. It uh, increases the bioavailability of uh, thymoquine. It acts as bioenhancer. That's why we tried since we are. Uh, at this point, we reached the point that uh, TQ is very active. So what about augmenting TQ with the uh, piperine to enhance uh, its absorption, to increase its bioavailability in the circulation and to get uh, better uh, response? Uh, Chris, let me just uh, focus in one point, maybe uh, not well uh, discussed uh, uh, the other side of cancer therapy uh, that uh, we need to focus on is the cost of uh, targeted therapies. Yes, uh, please. Please talk about the cost. Exactly. Because uh, the cost uh, will encourage us to focus more on natural products and uh, diets. Uh, let me give you just uh, simple numbers just to imagine uh, how much the cost of uh, targeted uh, uh, or chemical cancer uh, therapies. Uh, the US FDA in 2012 approved uh, 
12 uh, new drugs. 11 drugs of these 12 new drugs the, were priced to cost 100,000 per patient per year. If you go to statistics, more than 50% of cancer occurring in low and middle income countries. So if you want to use uh, these drugs in any of uh, low and uh, middle uh, income uh, countries, uh, actually no one can use them because the cost is extremely high. So even if, you, if we reach very effective drugs, even if we produce very selective and effective drugs, at the end of the day, these drugs will be available for less than 50% of patients because the majority of cancer patients registered now uh, in middle and low income countries and the expectation for 2025 is to reach 70% of uh, cancer patients in these countries. So that means the patient needs to spend more than $8,000 per month, which is a huge amount of money for any person living in these countries. Uh, that's why it is important to think about alternatives because uh, simply governments and the health sector in these countries will not approve these drugs, not because they are not effective, because they cannot cover the cost of these drugs for their uh, patients. So uh, using combination therapies, using in, uh, a nutritional intervention is important to augment, to support uh, conventional therapies. Also, it is important as alternative for very expensive and high cost of uh, some anti-cancer uh, agents. During 2013, because the problem is now global, a large group, more than 100 uh, scientists working on uh, leukemia, they co-authored a paper calling for uh, lower prices and uh, uh, more availability of uh, these drugs because actually the drugs are there, but nobody can uh, cover the cost and use uh, them. This also Chris, support what you are doing, support what we are we are doing to uh, develop nutrition, to develop anti-cancer therapies using uh, uh, natural blood product and dietary intervention. Thank you for bringing this up. This is such an important part of the conversation because uh, the cost of cancer drugs has skyrocketed uh, and it's much worse where I am. In the U.S., the, the average new drug is about a million dollars a year. Yeah, it's ten times, ten times more expensive than it yes. is in in many other countries. And yes. you know, a lot of Americans do have health insurance, and not all, but some percentage do. And so, some of the cost of that drug is covered, but even the percentage that Americans have to pay out of pocket still makes it uh, unaffordable uh, for for many. I mean, you know, millions of Americans. Uh, don't make enough money to afford cancer treatment and uh, which makes again this is another uh, facet of of the dilemma of cancer treatment and care is that it's really now it's just becoming only for the rich uh, and even though treatments are still not that effective uh, for advanced cancers uh, middle middle income middle class and, and poor people can't afford them and uh, even, so even in USA, hmm? even in America, even in America. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, in America, I mean, there are there are many, many cancer patients uh, who uh, end up in bankruptcy because of the cost of cancer care. Uh, there are, you know, if you're if you're following the cancer community, there are, you know, patients are raising money left and right. You know, they're selling their possessions, they're doing fundraisers, they're, they're asking for money from every source they can get just to afford treatments that aren't even that effective. Yeah. Uh, and it really, yeah, it's really tragic um, that uh, yes. what they call it, it's, the expression is that, you know, cancer treatments metastasize to your wallet. <laughs> the, so, That's true. Yeah, That's and, true. and it's very true. So it's, uh, it's a big problem. And um, Anyway, thank you for bringing that up. A lot of people don't think about th these things. They don't realize, oh, not only our treatments are very harsh and in many cases don't cure the patient, uh, but they also drain their entire li life savings and leave exactly. their family, you know, if they die, leave their family with no money or in debt. 
That's, that, that's why it is a priority to think about uh, alternative, specifically from natural products. Yeah, and, and I do understand the challenge too, which you, which you mentioned, is that natural compounds, the ones we've talked about, garlic, lemon, TQ, resveratrol, uh, black pepper, there is no money in these natural compounds. Exactly. It, it, exactly. And in order to get, just for folks, and I talk about this in great deal, detail in my book, by the way, for those of you have, who have not read it, but it costs on average a billion dollars in the United States to get FDA drug approval. A That's billion true. dollars. And so in order for a drug company to invest a billion dollars <laughs> testing a compound and getting it approved, they have to be able to make billions in profit. Exactly. And there's, there is not billions in profit to be made on garlic. <laughs> it's just <laughs> not gonna happen, That's you know, because you exactly. there's no patent. You can't patent garlic, you can't patent resveratrol. Anyone can grow garlic in their backyard. So uh, anybody, almost anyone could start a supplement company and sell resveratrol. So uh, that's why, again, this is, a lot of my audience understands these things, but for folks that are new and, and just, just on, the, on this path of discovery, that's why you're not seeing the kind of research that Dr. Talib is doing. That's why it does not make its way into clinical practice. That's why your oncologist doesn't know about it or isn't telling you about these wonderful studies. It's because his hands are tied and the drug companies certainly don't care about a garlic study. And so, you know, you're, you're on the front lines of this wonderful research that's happening. And, and I just want people to understand why that research stops, right? Brilliant people like yourself conduct the research, publish the results, and then it, it and that's where it stops it just doesn't get any further and so again i'm compelled to to find this information and share it and empower patients and anyone who's interested in health and prevention empower them with with knowledge that they can use on a daily basis hey drink some garlic and lemon extract it you know <laughs> so this now this this is where my mind goes so you, you, you did a study with TQ and resveratrol, and you did a study with TQ and black pepper. Does that make you want to do a study with all three combined? Uh, good question, uh, Chris. Uh, actually, uh, although natural products, uh, they have very good uh, safety profile, and you can use high concentration without uh, real toxicity, but when you increase the complexity of the combination, the toxicity appears. So when you start adding three, four, five, now we get uh, to reach a point that uh, some problems in the kidney, some problems in the liver. So uh, we started to do a combination of two agents. Uh, we got uh, good results. Now we are using uh, multiple combination, but with lower concentrations. And we got some uh, promising results. Because if you keep the same concentration of TQ, piperine, or and to add to them resveratrol, 100%, you will notice the, some signs of toxicity uh, on uh, animals, and we don't want that. So what we are doing, we are reducing the concentration, making a mixture that can uh, uh, get better results, but without uh, any uh, toxicity. So it is possible to combine uh, more than three, sometimes four, five, and do, we are doing that now to uh, present something uh, as uh, let's say anti-cancer food so to provide the uh, nutrients plus uh, different concentrations of garlic lemon tq uh, curcumin piperine and other agents uh, so we are preparing that we reduce the concentration and we are testing now the toxicity of uh, this combination to make sure that uh, before publishing it it is non uh, toxic at all that's fantastic i love it I'm, I'm excited. Uh, as soon as I publish the article, I will make sure to send you a, a copy. You will be the first one to receive uh, the copy. Yes, thank you. So uh, I, I really want to talk to you about melatonin mm -hmm. uh, because I know you have a lot to say about it and it will be very informative. Uh, and I've never interviewed a, a melatonin expert. Um, and so I'm excited about that. 
But before I do, are there any other studies that you have done that uh, uh, or that you want to talk about that that were re revelatory to you? Well, uh, recently we just finished evaluating uh, herbal drinks. Yes. Uh, herbal drinks, uh, Chris, they are very popular here. Everyday people, uh, they drink herbal drinks. Uh, and if you go to the supermarket, you may find, let's say, over than 25 types of different herbal drinks. So the question was, okay, if I am a cancer patient, what to drink? This one, this one, this one. This is an important question because at the end of the day, this patient uh, will drink whatever is available. But instead of drinking these herbal drinks randomly, we try to evaluate each herbal drink. So and we see which ones. So, exactly. Yeah. And wait, let me interrupt you because I want to I want to preframe this just a little bit. Uh, in the U.S., we don't really drink herbal drinks. I mean, yes. there are some herbal teas that people will drink uh, on occasion, but you know, most Americans they're drinking Coke and Pepsi and soft drinks, or they may be drinking like a sweet tea. Uh, and uh, or a sports drink like Gatorade <laughs> or an energy drink like yeah. Red Bull or Monster. I mean, it, and so most of those drinks are just just horrible, right? The, the closest thing is to, to maybe OK is a tea, but usually the sweet tea has a lot of corn syrup in it and a lot of sugar in it. Uh, exactly. But uh, and so would, would you talk about the types of herbal drinks, herbal beverages that are consumed over there just so you know americans and other people watching get an idea yes yes well uh, we have a lot of herbal drinks here uh, for example thyme thyme is uh, growing here uh, and uh, uh, they package it in tea bags and you just soak it in uh, hot water and drink it also a combination of ginger and lemon also very popular here uh, salvia uh, which is a plant, uh, aromatic plant, uh, very common, very safe, and people, they consume it uh, daily. Uh, and a lot of uh, herbal drinks, I don't remember the exact names, but in general, what we tried to do, uh, and uh, we published uh, uh, the abstract, and we will publish the full article uh, soon, so people will know uh, the exact name and the composition of herbal drinks. And some herbal drinks actually, they are combination of uh, four to five plants together in one bag. Also, they are very popular here. And let so, me ask you uh, this: do, do they are most of them consumed hot, as in like a yes. an herbal tea, yes. versus yes, a sir. yeah? Okay. okay. So, so they just soak them in hot water and drink yeah. them. So the question was: Okay, uh, why not to evaluate what we are drinking? We know that uh, our population uh, drinking uh, these uh, herbal drinks and we have cancer patients uh, in hospitals, if we get something supporting them, we give a recommendation uh, to the oncologist, uh, just keep in your mind, uh, this patient can take this herbal drink, it will support uh, <clears throat> him. So we try to start testing them. We The testing uh, was uh, two branches. The first branch is to evaluate uh, its anti-cancer effect. The second branch, was evaluating the immunomodulatory effect, whether these uh, herbal drinks uh, stimulate the immune system. So uh, we start uh, by giving intragastric directly to the mouth, uh, to the stomach. Uh, we start uh, giving uh, mice uh, different types of herbal drinks, and we prepare them exactly like what people prepare them uh, during daily drinking. So we make sure everything is uh, like what uh, people take. After two weeks, we inoculated the tumor in the mice. After tumor inoculation, we keep giving mice uh, different uh, herbal drinks for another two weeks, and we monitored the change in tumor size, and we also measured uh, the activity of some uh, cells in the immune system, like uh, uh, lymphocytes uh, and uh, macrophages. Uh, at the end of the study, we noticed that uh, two herbal drinks were very effective compared with uh, others, which is opposite uh, what uh, against what we believe. Because here uh, in the Middle East, they believed with the uh, and they drink more of the herbal drinks that consisted of 
multiple plants, uh, five or six plants in one bag. All people consider this as powerful drink. But after we did the study, we find that uh, thyme and uh, lemon plus garlic herbal drink were the most powerful to augment the immune system and to inhibit uh, uh, cancer, which is against what uh, people believe here. The majority were thinking about uh, a combination of uh, plants uh, instead of thyme of, uh, or garlic and uh, uh, or uh, lemon and uh, ginger. So lemon and ginger together are, yes. are wonderful, which we, we know that. Obviously, the, and, uh, and thyme. Yes. Which thyme. Y- you say thyme over in American say thyme. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and that's just a tea. I mean, and again, you say herbal drinks over here. We just say herbal teas to, uh, to okay. imp- imply that it's a hot drink. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that's really interesting that, uh, that those were not surprising with the lemon and ginger. Uh, uh, but thyme, be, that's a surprise. Mm-hmm. It is very powerful. And, and so what uh, you saw in that study was you saw tumor shrinkage and immune, immune boosting effects and tumor shrinkage. Exactly. exactly. And we did the study as a protective and a treatment. That's why we start giving herbal drinks two weeks before tumor inoculation ah. and two weeks after tumor inoculation. So we get both information, whether it protect against cancer and we got good results. Also, if the mouse has a cancer, whether it uh, enhance or uh, act as uh, anti-cancer agent and uh, cause shrinkage in the cancer. And in both uh, experiments, uh, we got uh, very good results. So what, in terms of percentage, what uh, percent of mice were uh, protected by the herbal drinks and and didn't develop tumors, if any? Uh, uh, Actually, we got 40% of mice did not develop tumor that's that's incredible yeah that's and then simply are just using drink yeah and then what percentage of mice that had tumors that were given the drink afterward uh were had complete regression complete regression we got uh uh 30 percent complete okay. regression at the end of the study uh this was the highest uh, response in all uh, uh herbal uh, teas that we uh, tested. And that was the lemon ginger? uh, It was for uh, lemon ginger, exactly. And uh, similar results were obtained for uh, thyme. Uh, But the idea, these herbal drinks, uh, we recommend for any cancer patients to consume them daily with the medication, with all things that he is taking. Just take these herbal uh, teas daily to keep your immune system, to post your immune system, to uh, increase the stress on cancer uh, cells. So even the percentage is uh, relatively low. We are speaking about 40 to 30 percent. But uh, as a, a supplementary drink, uh, I think uh, this result is good. Was the lemon ginger tea a dried, dry tea bag? Yes, dry. Exactly like the normal tea, just. Uh, uh, we soak it in uh, hot water and drink it. That's great. Okay, so now let's talk about melatonin. Okay. <laughs> I know you're passionate about melatonin, and uh, so yeah, please educate educate us on the value of melatonin, and, and it it seems to be very very overlooked and underestimated. That's true. That's true. I agree with you. Actually, before speaking about our experiment, uh, melatonin. Uh, is a hormone uh, produced by a pineal gland uh, in the brain. Uh, this hormone is responsible for uh, our biological clock. So uh, at night, the concentration of melatonin increase. That's why we feel sleepy and sleep. Uh, during the uh, day, uh, early hours in the day, the level of melatonin decrease. So we feel active and start our day with time. This will set our biological uh, clock. This is the main role of melatonin. However, this compound or this hormone is the most potent immunomodulator on the earth. In the whole the body. Best, exactly. Whatever you take will not support your immune system like uh, melatonin. And the previous studies showed that people 
uh, sleeping less hours or working overnight. The, the study uh, was conducted on the medical staff working overnight and uh, sleeping uh, less than uh, five hours per day. They follow up the group and uh, after uh, many years, they discovered that the group uh, who, who work overnight with less hour of sleeping develop more cancer than normal people. The main difference between them is melatonin. Those people who don't sleep well, they prevent the body from using uh, melatonin. They force their bodies to uh, produce less uh, melatonin because they work uh, uh, in the time where uh, they must sleep. Uh, after this observation, we uh, tested melatonin in our lab, single and in combination with uh, uh, other agents. We noticed that uh, this uh, hormone has multiple function. It has anti-cancer activity by inhibiting uh, angiogenesis. Also, we noticed uh, a strong and very potent immune response after uh, giving uh, melatonin uh, to mice. Also, uh, it acts uh, by inducing apoptosis in cancer cells. Uh, also, it attacks uh, cancer metabolism because you know uh, cancer has altered metabolism. So, uh, one uh, of the most powerful agents that attack enzymes uh, active in cancer cells and uh, involved in metabolism was uh, melatonin. That's why it is important for anyone, whether he's a cancer patient or not, to get enough hours of sleep. This is really important. Uh, now in uh, our uh, area and maybe in America, uh, people, young people, they spend long hours. They sleep uh, uh, less than uh, usual. If you go back uh, before 30 or 50 years, people were sleeping uh, much better than uh, our days. Uh, that's why uh, this is one explanation why uh, cancer incidence increasing because we are preventing our bodies from using uh, melatonin. Also, melatonin is a very powerful antioxidant. Uh, and if you reduce oxidative stress, you will reduce the chance for cancer development. So we are speaking about very important free hormone just go sleep and get the benefit of uh, melatonin to protect yourself from uh, cancer. I um, have researched melatonin, and I did more research on it for my book. And um, the big takeaways that you mentioned that I just want to make sure we hammer this home is that uh, night shift work, working nights, is terrible for you. It's, it's so bad for you, Absolutely. right? It well, increases your risk of cancer and numerous other diseases. It, it, like if you're working the night shift, do everything in your power to get back to, day, to, to a day shift because exactly. your body will not produce as much melatonin if you're sleeping during the day. And melatonin is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful anti-cancer hormones in your body. And you've got to, you got to get good sleep and how much, Sleep? Do you need you? Most people need between eight and nine hours. That's true. That's you know, true. we used to hear six to eight hours, but it really, for most people, it's over eight hours is of a, a good night's sleep. And uh, over time, if you're just if you you develop a sleep deficit, and uh, it just it'll just drain you down and eventually make you vulnerable to disease. And so that's important if you want to prevent it or heal it. So, now, here's the question that I that comes to mind I think a lot of people are wondering so number one you you've got to optimize your sleep right you've got to go to bed earlier you need to sleep in the darkness maybe mm -hmm. make sure your bedroom is cool so you, you don't wake up a lot at night and try to get rid of anything uh, limit things that might wake you up at night like even household pets and things can disturb your sleep so right. you want to create a really really ideal sleep environment but uh, once a person has done that and they've optimized their melatonin, uh, is there value to supplementation? Supplementation of melatonin? Yes. Yeah, it is available. Uh, now, uh, many pharmaceutical companies, they produce uh, uh, melatonin, and people, they uh, can take it uh, daily for uh, protection. Uh, so if uh, someone need to uh, 
augment uh, his body or supplement his body with melatonin, uh, it's okay. It's available in the uh, pharmacy and uh, safe. Anyone uh, uh, can take it, but uh, uh, it is very powerful and uh, can protect uh, the body. But always, always what I said, uh, if you stimulate your body to produce your own melatonin, this will be better than uh, taking uh, supplements. If you need to take supplements, it's okay. But as you mentioned, Chris, uh, sleeping enough hours in a uh, good environment, uh, continuous sleeping, uh, this will do uh, the job uh, perfectly. So you're, the best the best source of melatonin is your own body, exactly. But supplements also do can can have value. Exactly, they can be helpful. Okay, it's it's good to know. Okay, well, I we are just over an hour, so Dr. Talib, I, I want to be respectful of your time. This has been a, a thrill. It, I am so excited to share it. You're you're such a wonderful, caring, and brilliant man, and uh, I just uh, I'm just elated. To, to be able to, to spend this time with you and to share what you have just talked about with my people uh, and with the world. So thank you for the re- research you're doing. Thank you for your big heart. Uh, obviously, you care a lot about helping people um, you know, discover nutrition and helping people take care of themselves and helping people who can't afford cancer treatment do things to help themselves. And we're we're on the same team, and it feels pretty good. Exactly. exactly. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. I'm. It, it's really a pleasure to meet you and to discuss these topics uh, with you. And uh, I want to thank you again for uh, what you are doing. Uh, I really respect and appreciate uh, what uh, you are doing. Uh, you are doing what we believe. We believe that everything should be available for patients. Uh, symbol. Uh, Uh, intervention, uh, nutrients, natural products that can uh, help cancer patients should be available free for anyone. Uh, You are doing that in a very beautiful way. So thank you again and it's really a great pleasure for me uh, to record with you and to speak about these topics with you. Thank you so much. Okay everybody, thanks for watching. Please share this. Obviously you've made it to the end of the video. You know how powerful this information is. Help me reach more people. Help Dr. Talib reach more people. Uh, we will. I will link to um, all these wonderful studies he's done in the show notes, and uh, with some other resources and things for you. And uh, help us. Help us spread the word that nutrition and natural, non-toxic compounds from nature can help you heal and prevent disease. It's a wonderful message. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all real soon. Bye, Dr. Talib. Bye.